Hello and welcome to Dollar Unit Sampling. My name's Jeff and I'm glad that you're here. I got a question from Anthony and he is making sample selections for loans. And he's doing this kind of the manual way and he wanted to find out if there was sort of a, a faster way to accomplish this. So basically the idea here is dollar interval sampling or dollar unit sampling. And it's where every dollar is a sampling unit. So we'd want to identify loans at each $1,000 interval or whatever interval is entered. The manual way to do this is to create a sort of a cumulative balance column where we would say equals value in the cell to the left, and then we'd add it up. So we take the cumulative plus this value and we'd bring it down. All right, so there we finally hit our interval uh, of 1,000. So we'd somehow mark it as, as a selection and then we'd start the process again. Okay, equals that. This is equal to this plus this. Oh, we hit 1,000 again, we'd mark it. All right, equals this, and you get the idea. Equals this plus the cell above, and we'd mark it, okay? That's sort of the, the manual way to do it. Let's see if we can have some Excel formulas help us out, okay? Basically, for, um, for this approach, and you know, in Excel there's a variety of different ways to accomplish any given task, but for this approach, we're gonna use some helper columns. And when we use these from and to helper columns, the selection column becomes pretty straightforward. So for the first loan, we'll start at $1, and then we need to go to the end of this value, so 111. But instead of typing that in, we wanna write a formula. So this is gonna be equal to um, the amount plus the from value. That gets us a one too much, so we'll just subtract one from it. And now we have this interval here from one to 111. And this is a selection if the interval value falls between the from and to values. And there are a variety of ways we can accomplish this. One easy way is to use the AND function. The AND function returns true when all of its arguments are true. So we're gonna define two arguments. First of all, we're gonna ask, is this interval value, absolute uh, reference, greater than or equal to the from value? Okay, that's our first test, comma, and our second test is, is this absolute value less than or equal to this, okay? So before I hit enter, let's review. I'm asking the AND function to return true when both of its arguments are true. The first argument says, is this interval value greater than or equal to the from value, All right? And I've used absolute cell references, so when we fill the formula down, these references won't update, and I used a relative reference for D9 so that when I fill the formula down, this reference will update, comma. And then the next argument is, is this interval value less than or equal to our two value, okay? Enter. So this is not a selection, which makes sense. And now let's write the next formula. This is gonna simply be, um, well, it depends, right? It depends if the previous loan was a selection. If the previous loan was a selection, we need to start it back at one. Otherwise, we just need to add one to the two value. So we can use an if function to accomplish this. And we're gonna say if the previous value is true, okay, it's a selection. And if it was selected, we're gonna start this sampling interval process again by starting at one. Otherwise, we're gonna take the two value from the previous loan and then add one. Close the function before I hit enter, let's review. I'm asking the if function to, to do a test, okay? If the previous loan was a selection, this whole process starts again at one. Otherwise, we just continue this cumulative balance. So we take the two value and add one. So we should be able to hit enter and it should start at one, one, two, that's good. Okay, the logic for this two um, formula, we're just gonna carry this down and we should be able to carry this down. So far, so good. Now, these formulas are set, so we should be able to fill these B, loan B formulas all the way down, but let's just go one row at a time and make sure we look good. Okay, this looks good, and this was selected when we were doing this manually also. We should be able to fill it down and down, and that one is selected. And let's just fill this all the way down, okay? So any of these true values are selected. 
Now, if we wanted to spice it up a bit, we can. We could use conditional formatting, <laughs> conditional formatting, highlight cell rules equal to, and we can just say if the value is equal to true, let's identify it somehow. You can pick any format you like. I'll go with green, and OK. All right, and this is great. Now, let's say we change the interval next audit or next period. Maybe it's uh, 500. Okay, maybe it's 2,000. Okay, and so these formulas will automatically adapt uh, for us. All right, so hey, Anthony, thanks for the question, man, and hope these formulas help out. Thanks, have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University.